Welcome to the NBA Show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Now is the album of our discontent. Okay, why? Because of what we're about to talk about, a dark journey. Oh, yeah, man. Like, there is so many things wrong with this episode. But hey, uh, before we get into it, let's, well, tell the people at home what we're going to do. And in today's episode, we are going to review Season 1 episode... Sorry, no. Um, what? No, that's that's wrong. Okay, I, I'm reading things wrong. Anyway, we are going to review Season 1 of Pony Life Episode 7. In this episode, there's two... How do I even do it? Like, in this episode, there's two titles? What? Because they're only 15 minutes long, you get two episodes in one block. True, but how do I even say it? <laughs> Ponyville Life episodes one uh, episodes X and Y, or how about block instead of episode? True, I've been hearing that because what Animaniacs did that before in blocks. So anywho, yeah, Animaniacs did it all, man, including coming back. I know. Oh, that that preview was really good. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that instead. Yeah, I mean that was just a what teaser. And what they did the Jurassic Park parody. They they, they mentioned that okay, Animaniacs is back, and it was new, not reruns. And then they said that they're gonna bring back Pinky the Brain. Like wow, that's awesome! Now are, are they gonna bring back Mittens and whatever name is um, the Squirrels? Oh, Buttons and Mindy. Yeah, Buttons and Mindy. Then the Squirrels. Uh, what's her name? I forgot. Oh, uh, Cranky the Squirrel. No, Slappy the Squirrel. Yeah, Slappy Squirrel. And the Good Feathers. <laughs> but not Chicken Boo. Chicken Boo can, can stay off to the side. Why? Is Chicken Boo bad? Eh, he wasn't the most interesting. Ah, uh, yeah. It's it's a premise kind of deal where it's a big giant chicken and somehow everybody's infatuated with it until they discover it's a big giant chicken. Yep. And I've successfully diverted us. Ha ha ha. Yeah, but anywho, uh, we still got ponies to run, but hey, uh, let's, let's do this. So in the first block, uh, the trials, uh, the, the trails less trotten, Saltashai tries to join a trail trooper, uh, trail trotters troop, and her friends try to protect her from a big disappointment. Okay. And in death of a sales pony, the main six, enters a cooking, sorry, cookie selling contest in the hopes of winning a celebrity meet and greet for Fluttershy. Okay, <clears throat> I, I, I see what you mean last week by, okay, this is a story arc that involves Fluttershy and whatnot, but why? Mm, I, I guess I understand why the parts, but this is one of those scenarios where. I like what they're doing, but mm, it's done so short. Well, that's Pony Life episodes in general. You only got, fi- well, not even 15 minutes, 12 minutes? Uh, 11 in total, so each episode is about 5? Well, that doesn't sound right. Well, technically, what? Uh, if If you're... Including the songs, like the, the track itself is what? Um, 11 minutes and one... Yeah, 11 minutes. Let's just say it's 11 minutes. And if you minus the song, minus a minute. So each episode would be around four minutes. Norman, I think your math is off because this is two episodes to make a 22-minute block. No, Silver. No. Jeez. No. I, I have it in front of me. Yeah. The total length is 11 minutes. Of the entire block? Of the entire episode. Like, we're reviewing episode 7 now, and if episode 7 has two blocks. Uh, well, either way, it, <coughs> it's a mess. Yeah. So, the first impressions, uh, you, you can take uh, both of them at the same time. Oh, oh, you know what? No. Uh, let's do uh, the Trails Less Trotten. Okay, Trails Less Trotten. I was just like, oh, this is going to be a thing, is it? There are a lot of jokes, and it's mostly set up. This is just a get ready for it episode. So I don't mind uh, I don't mind a setup piece, but 
to make this work, you're like, oh, great. This is the liar revealed type of story. But rather than have it done right away, they're going to have it hang over our heads for a little while. whoop de do yeah. Oh, joy. Yeah, and the worst part is the the person that's lying is one of... You know what? There's spoilers already. No, I'm not going to talk about it. No. But, oh, man. This episode was interesting. Like, it delved into Fluttershy's psyche a bit more. But I felt like, oh, God. Really, Fluttershy? Like, this is the extent of your character in this series? Like, really? <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> oh, well... We'll, def- we'll definitely be talking about Fluttershy's character. Yeah, and oh man, the rest, the rest, the rest. <coughs> oh, boys. Uh, you know what? Let's not dilly dally. Let's get right into it so we can cover part two later on. So, anywho, we start off the episode with, well, Fl- Pinkie Pie uh, baking cookies and a meal. Uh, flies into Sugar Cube Corner, and the whole crew is there, and they got what you call this, um, Fluttershy's letter, uh, and it's the acceptance letter or letter from the I'm just gonna say it like the Girl Scout, whatever it's called. So, trail truck. Yeah, there's a tongue twister. So, they got a letter, and they're waiting up for Fluttershy. And they set it up that, okay, Fluttershy has been wanting to join this group for a really, 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 really long time. And we get a few backstories here. And one of the few interesting ones here is that Pinkie Pie took over Sugar Cube Corner. Okay, so... Yes, yes, it was a hostile takeover. (laughs) The cakes are now living under the bridge. Oh, God. In a van down by the river. Oh, God. But it does explain why Sugar Cube Corner looks the way it looks. I'm still getting over that a male flew in. That the, like, oh, hey, was it Flash Sentry? No Twilight would like that. <laughs> oh, boys. Uh, but still, um, the whole setup here is just um, Fluttershy has been wanting to go to or join the group for a really, really long time now. And one of the few reasons why is because she wants to meet up with this celebrity dolphin who is really awesome and can act and do stuff. So, yeah, she's been doing, yeah, she, she's been wishing this for a really long time now. You know, I'm just going to skip because it's just mostly set up and such is creepy. Nothing new. Let's also uh, honor one moment where Twilight is facing some kind of evil being cloud of evilness mm-hmm. and she declares that there's no foe no foe too irredeemable <laughs> meanwhile in another dimension uh chrysalis cozy glow and t-rex are all getting a cramp <laughs> uh yeah true and, and don't forget the sirens well they're they're at least mobile yeah i, I mean that's over there's problem oh <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so over there de- over there we'll have to find a way to deal with it yeah, so anywho, uh, getting back to the present, uh, the crew here really wants to know what the results are. And Applejack says, you know, reading another person's letter is a federal crime. But you know what? Let's just crack it open and see what it says. And Applejack says, yay, you're not accepted. Wait, what? Well, yeah, I mean, the Girl Scouts, not full adult scouts. Yeah, and, and that's what uh, Fluttershy read because... Uh, even though Fluttershy quote-unquote qualifies, she doesn't in terms of age. And the rest of the crew kind of debates like, oh, uh, should we, uh, we uh, Fluttershy will be crushed. Should we tell her? I mean, that that's, she's been waiting for this for a really, really, really long time now. And she comes bursting into uh, Sugar Cube Corner, being really all hyped because this the day that she gets the result of her entry to the um, girl scouts. Nobody really has the heart to tell her that she didn't get in, and the first person up to bed was Applejack, and telling her, "Yo, you got in, dog." Wait, what? Oh, Dizam. 
<laughs> Gonna pause here. Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, Dizam. Applejack be dropping some sick lies. I know. But here's the thing. Everyone's like, oh, no, Applejack is the element of honesty. She's the element of honesty. Well, all right. In Friendship is Magic, she's the element of honesty. This is Pony Life. But ironically, they make direct reference to the elements of harmony earlier in the episode when Twilight's talking with that uh, dark specter thing in Bob. So you're like, well, which is it? All right, I can accept that she has the better capacity to lie in this storyline, but not if you reference the elements of harmony. You try to have it both ways. And uh, I'm just operating on the fact that if things are similar to before, unless stated otherwise, they're still the same. So I'm going to operate on that mindset and say that Applejack lied. And here's the thing. Applejack has lied before. She's not a stranger to lying. And most of the time when she lied, things turn bad. And yeah, this one is one of those same scenarios where when she lied, things go bad. But we don't see the payoff in 22 minutes. We have to, well, okay, we do see the payoff in 22 minutes, but it takes a really long time. In what? Six minutes, you said? Uh, four. Four minutes. Four minutes, eh? Huh? Yeah, I know. If you if you really look at it, uh, the intro, let's just say it's one minute. Outro, one minute. Uh, and total episode is 11 minutes. So if you really break it down... Uh, break it down. Yep. But anywho, uh, sorry. But, but, but either way, well, I mean, the liar revealed, now it's a waiting game. Now we're just waiting to see when will Fluttershy learn the truth and how will she react and wh- how is she going to reconcile with her friends. And When you're waiting for something to happen versus enjoying it in the moment, it's not as much fun. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there's, there's, they, they did movies of this where uh, the liar reveal in the second act of the movie now they need to mend things up in the third act oh that's so cliche but this one here probably the same but because of the way that the show is done it's done differently but anywho um uh, i'm just gonna skip a few things here because it's just the same uh, everybody here questions apple jack's decision on doing so and the excuse is, oh, look at Fluttershy. She is so pure. We must protect her. We must mamoru her. And Apple, and sorry, and even Twilight says, like, what are you doing? You, you better tell her the truth. And Applejack says, go look at Fluttershy. She, she's so pure. We, we get to mamoru her. And one thing creepy, she has the Dakimakura of the dolphin. Wait, what? Oh, yes. Her idol is a dolphin. Who talks? Talking dolphin. Really now? Like, Fluttershy talks to animals and a talking dolphin impresses her? Oh, God. Well, I mean, this is a dolphin everyone can understand. I guess. But anywho, um, I'm just going to fast forward a bit because this is the same thing over... Uh, anywho, they try to make Fluttershy happy by, oh, let's do badges. You get a badge for this, you get a badge for that, blah, 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 badge, 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 badge. So you get a lot of badge. And yay, episode ends because we have to move on to the other episode. Wow, that's fast. So the death of a sales pony. Uh, what do you think, man? Oh, this might be my least favorite episode in the entire first season. Oh. And contender for worst of the series in my eyes. Mostly because it shows Fluttershy... How do I put this? Normally, there are differences between uh, French vs. Magic and Pony Life. And I'll accept that if I could see the, the genuine overall character still shining through. I don't recognize this Fluttershy. This is a very, very different Fluttershy in a bad way. Basically showing her obsessive, uncaring, hostile. Now, funny enough, later on we can talk about how there's a how some people actually enjoy this Fluttershy more. Oh, really? No. 
But uh, for me, I am not of that troop. I do not enjoy this presentation or this take on Fluttershy. And as it still continues the liar reveal without any uh, without any consequence yet, it feels like, oh, we're just spinning our wheels. <clears throat> it feels that way. And yeah, man, like, uh, how would I put this? When I saw this episode, uh, looking at uh, this version of Fluttershy, yeah, she's entertaining. She's entertaining, all right, but it feels like the writers don't really get her. Like, they don't really understand Fluttershy. Or maybe they do. Maybe they do, and they couldn't really do anything with it, so they need to do an Applejack. Which is funny. I used to think Applejack and Fluttershy couldn't work well together. Friendship's magic proved me wrong. Yep, yep, yep. And now... Now look at us. Now it's the opposite way. Now they're antagonizing one another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! But anywho, um, this episode reminds me of a previous episode. Which one? Uh, do you remember the one where uh the main six went to Manhattan to watch Winnie the Hills? Rarity takes Manhattan. Yes. <clears throat> Oh, yes, where Rarity turns her friends into a sweatshop, basically. Yeah, and this has the same feel, except that uh, in this one, Rarity is stressed out of her mind just because somebody stole her fabric. And yeah, there's a lot of pressure put onto her. This one is just yes, Fluttershy being greedy. There's, there's no if and or but. Like, this is just her greedy. Uh, but anywho, uh, let's let's just move on. Um, okay, we start off the episode with Pinkie Pie baking cookies just for fun because she has a bakery and she likes to bake. And Fluttershy comes in saying, "Yo, we need to bake cookies for baking cookie sale. Uh, the highest gross for baking cookies will get a chance to meet up with the dolphin. Yeah, I need to do that. I need to win." Uh, we need to win at all costs. So she recruits her friends to go and sell cookies. It is a success because the f- main six love selling cookies and because it's fun. And with that, Fluttershy gets a lot of doge and uh, she gets greedy. And she wants to accumulate a lot of bits so she can win. So she goes, she tells all her friends to sell, sell, sell. And yeah, she, she being mean about it. So I'm just going to go through what all the ponies do. Uh, Pinkie Pie is the baker. Applejack sells cookies in a line. Twilight does uh, analytics and predictions. And what? Rarity does fashion promotion somehow. And who else am I missing? Rainbow Dash. Yes, Rainbow Dash does delivery. Uh, am I missing anybody? What does Applejack do? Yeah, Applejack sells cookies in a line and stuff, like traditionally sell. Just watching this, we pretty much understand why these six weren't allowed into Trail Trotters proper. Imagine a kid trying to compete with this. Oh, yeah, no. But no, she can't. No, no, no kid can anymore. Just because the oversaturation of cookies. Nobody's going to buy Girl Scout cookies when you have Pinkie Pie selling. Well, in which case they've actually... Oh, that's a fresh wrinkle. They've actually sabotaged Trail Trotters because Trail Trotters can't make the sale and they aren't getting the money from these sales. Yeah. (laughs) So, well, there's your happy thought, everyone. Yep. They're murdering Trail Trotters. Bye! (laughs) Yep. And you know what? This is... uh, There's no point for me to stop and say what do you think because... There's no point to stop because it goes frantically. Maybe a part okay here where uh, you got Spike and the pets, like Spike Gummy and Angel Bunny. Angel Bunny looks cute, by the way. Uh, they want to have snacks and what? Pinkie Pie? No, uh, Fluttershy is putting them to work to earn their keep. What? Okay, so now Fluttershy has been really tyrannical and the group says that 
yeah, you're being too mean. This is not fun anymore and stuff. And Fluttershy realized what she did and apologizes to the group be like by being small and doing cute faces and whatnot. And a fun fact here, um, Pinkie Pie has a brother. Oh, yes. Brace yourself for that one. Yeah, and the story for this one. Oh, you Um, I, I'm just going to tell the audience at home. Do you know the story of Hansel and Gretel? Yes, that. <laughs> okay. So, anywho, um, with that, Fluttershy says she's uh, going to take things slowly. And uh, cookies is fun time. Yay. So, Fluttershy heads back to Sugar Cube Corner, where she noticed the pet and Spike are rushing to um, make cookies and whatnot. And Fluttershy didn't even tell them to stop top she just tells him to keep on working and has a devious smile and <laughs> uh, she's going to go meet up with that dolphin person and episode ends oh god <laughs> yep yeah you can see why this is my least favorite arc and this my least favorite episode within pony life yeah i mean i i, I... do you see do you feel my pain yeah, man, like this. It's very painful is, pain. This is oh man, I, I oh man. We both here like Fluttershy. We both here are a huge fan of Fluttershy, and this rendition of her is interesting. It it shows her being selfish. It shows her being needy and wanting, and uh, yay, we get to see another side of her. We've seen that before in, uh, what's that season 9 episode where she became multiple ponies? Oh, uh, so, no, no, no. It's, oh man, I keep I keep coming up with every other uh, title. Fake it till you make it. Yeah, fake it till you make it, yeah. So, it's one of those things where, yeah, we've seen that before and that was done more tactly. This one here is just oh my god what 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 happened here? Oh man, okay, Silver. Um, overall final thoughts. Well, actually, I'm not sure if this would count as a final thought, but it, I do want to give voice to why some folks actually like this Fluttershy more than Friendship is Magic's Fluttershy, which believe me feels like a very foreign concept to me. But the big argument is that. Very often in Friendship is Magic, we get the same lesson with Fluttershy over and over and over again. She is, she has to learn confidence. She has to overcome her self-doubt. That even if there's an external goal, a great deal of the conflict within the episode is her own internal hesitation. This Fluttershy is all about the external conflict. She's aggressive. She's a go-getter. She's more assertive. And some people really go for that. They enjoy seeing a Fluttershy who actually pursues an ambition. And if she has to step on a few other points along the way, eh, c'est la vie. Okay. So they're all for it. I'm not, because part of what I enjoy of Fluttershy is that she is kind and gentle, and the temptation is to not be kind and gentle. This is not a temptation to avoid that philosophy. It is a complete abandonment thereof. Here's the thing, I mean... Yeah, it's one of those things where she's chasing for something that she wants. Like, she really wants this. But at the same time, how how do I even do this? Because, okay, maybe preconceived notions of who her friends are. Because she's friends with Discord. See, in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking this. She can just ask, yo, Discord, could you help me uh, meet up with this dolphin person that I really enjoy and like? I mean, nothing too cruel, nothing too fancy. Just teleport me to where he is and we we can just hang out. Could you do that for me, please? Could you do me a solid? And, yeah, you see what I mean here. Do Do you understand what I mean? I understand what you mean, but knowing Discord, he'd probably, like, have the dolphin all trussed up and abducted and there's several police ponies running after him yeah i mean that'll be something there's no difference in this one 
and plus, you know, they're they're na- apparently national heroines if they are indeed still the elements of harmony. I'm pretty sure you could swing some clout. Yeah. If nothing else, Pinky. Pinky won. Well, Pinky was part of a national competition. True. I mean, oh man, like one what one aficionado to another. I mean, it's one of those things where I mean, rarity, r- rarity is popular, right? Ah, oh God, there's there's so many ways for Fluttershy to meet up with this dolphin person thingy, whatever it is. I mean, okay, let's just keep uh in mind that uh the movie is canon or the movie is uh in line with this. Uh, we could have seen. Queen Novo, we could have seen... Yeah, Queen Novo. Queen Novo is the closest because she's a quote-unquote sea pony. Maybe they know each other. Like, oh, man. Ah, like, oh man. There's so many ways that the story could have been done well. If you really want to push that line or push that story where Fratishai wants to meet up with her idol. And this could be one of those stories where they go for the line never meet your heroes and since what uh, Fluttershy is unhealthily obsessed with the dolphin it could be that you could do that storyline instead but this one here it could be that on top of the whole damage that's going on well I don't know about the one-to-one of Queen Nova and the like because, again, Friendship is Magic versus Pony Life. But yeah, the, honestly, the biggest thing, and although this would maybe open the door to a worse situation, you have the three little sisters. Why not be their trail trotter guide? So she could still compete but be a part of Trail Trotters as an adult. Yeah, that would be much better. That's the idea. That would be a much better idea. You have the three sisters have, uh, what, Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and Sweetie Belle join the Trail Trotters, and Fluttershy will be their entourage, their liaisons, or whatever it is. But that ra- then imagine her trying to make that demand, uh, all these cookie demands, of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. Yeah, and uh, would that would that actually be worse as she is now being so cruel to children? It's no difference. Uh, the feel and tempo for what is being shown and was sorry, uh, our idea and was shown to us. There's no difference because Fluttershy is just competitively mean in this one, and in this one here. Okay, the only way that it could make it work is that the CMCs are also a huge fan of the dolphin and they want to meet the dolphin too. And they will do whatever at any cost. Any cost, no matter what. And is it me or am I starting to get really, really angry? <laughs> I th- Honestly, I think you were getting nihilistic there for a little bit. You're like, oh, it doesn't matter. Let's not bother with this. We are nihilists. I can get you a toe. <laughs> Oh man, we believe in nothing. <laughs> oh man, okay. Uh, I I think we already shared our overall thoughts, right? Well, just that this is not a Fluttershy I find terribly endearing, and the fact that we go now two episodes and the lie is still not revealed, and it's going to get worse from here. Oh yeah, you've seen, you've seen episodes already. I haven't like. I see. I'll see episodes on the day that we're reviewing this. I'll. I've stared into the abyss, man, but I didn't blink. Oh God! Did you throw fireballs at it? No, that's that's for the comic book <laughs> review next. <laughs> yep. Uh, but anywho, oh man, uh, you know what? Let's move on from this because, uh, in general, I don't like this Fluttershy. You don't like this Fluttershy. This episode, both episodes or both blocks are a big, I won't say disappointment, but they're just big no-nos for us. Agreed? Just not not our thing. Yeah. It's fun. It's a fun episode. It's fun to see Fluttershy that way, but I don't enjoy her. Ugh. Nor do I. Yep. 
it's harder to really get behind these characters because the episodes are so short. You don't get to see them go through an emotional journey. They're usually point A to point B very quickly. You could enjoy sort of the spectacle, but if this were my introduction to Pony, I'd have no interest. I totally agree with that one, man. Like, if I were to sit someone down and ask them to go watch Pony Life, let's just say watch one of the better episodes, uh, no, they probably won't. Uh, they they probably call me insane and go tell me to fly a kite. Like help, he's just threatening me with ponies. Yep, their their heads are huge. <laughs> uh, but anywho, Silver, what are we gonna do next week? Next week, well, I did say we would review a comic. I think it's time we went back and reviewed My Little Pony, uh, French Miss Magic issue eighty, a LARPing comic. Oh, that's gonna be fun! I can't wait. Should I roll for initiative? Yes, make sure you don't critically fail. Oh, that's a one day. Or you'll disappear like Torterra. Oh, no. <laughs> no, that's bad. But anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, a variety of places. You can find me on Twitter and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. You can also support my videos and comics and other works on Patreon and uh, Ko-fi. Just do a search for Silver Quill. And on YouTube, a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill shall summon me forth. Plus, on Wednesdays, you can find me uh, on Equestry Daily posting a comic review or perhaps an editorial. Awesome. Guys, go check his work. They're they're really great. And, well, uh, let's see. Also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch your radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PrintLeaveLive.com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash The MBS Show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Tristan, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vecquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. This episode... This show. Uh. It doesn't get better from here, man. It doesn't get better. Oh, man. I hope you're kidding because, uh, you know what? There's no point. <laughs> Am I? Roll perception. Did you get a 10? No, you got a 3. Okay. You notice that I have a human voice. Oh no.